Hey there, fellas. So here's the car I'd like to show you today. As you might have figured out, this here is an off-roader. A lot of Neva. To be honest, I was impressed by a photo I saw recently, where someone installed a third axle into a car just like this one. I've been receiving lots of pictures with a bunch of different cars done in the same way. Starting with Volgas and all the way up to G-Wagons and other stuff. It's all very interesting. Anyway, so we've decided to do something similar with this Neva. I think it looks pretty sweet. We took it to the drag fest and the guys decided to give it a slight makeover. I mean, it did look pretty boring before that, with its grey color and everything. Anyway, what we have in mind is actually quite simple. Getting another axle in isn't... It isn't too big of a deal. We can definitely make it happen. So yeah, it's easily doable. But there is a catch to all this, though. It is easy to get an axle in there without the wheels being driven. But that's only half of the story. Making this axle take part in propelling the car forward, as in transferring torque to the wheels so that they rotate together with the other set, well, that's a bit tougher. Anyway, we have to get started. As we like to say around here, enough talk. Time to install that axle. Let's do this. 6x6 lot and Eva by Garage 54. As always, translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. All right, fellas, here's what we're looking at. It's pretty much like always. You might be afraid of what you see, but you keep on hammering anyway. The Neva is looking great so far. All of this actually looks pretty... awesome. When people were sending us all those photos, you remember there was a Volga among them, a Neva, and something else I can't quite remember. Most of those photos depicted Nevas, and a six-wheel Volga. I vaguely remember there being a Volga, but I did study the Neva pictures quite thoroughly. They took a two-door... a three-door Neva. Yeah, it was a three-door. So anyway, they welded the rear end from another three-door Neva. Yes, they did. But we decided to take a different route. Yeah, we got a car that was pre-welded. <laughs> with a long chassis. It's all fitting together quite nicely. Let's check out how we set this up. Our system is actually incredibly simple. Take it away, Cyril. So, here's the key element holding everything together. I'm talking about the axle. The main purpose of which is mounting the suspension. So, first off we have an axle, plus we have two bearings over there, which have some leaf springs attached to them. And at the tips of those leaf springs we have a couple of axles. Anyway, that's the key component of our suspension system. It's a pretty straightforward layout. 
Here we can have a look at how it's all set up and how it was made. I can't say that it was an easy thing to make. We had to do a bunch of adjustments. But on the other hand, none of this is really complicated. So the leaf springs are connected to the axles. Next up we have some rods, a bunch of them. First we have the lower links which tie the axles together. Then we have some leading arms, or how do you name them correctly? Can you help me out here? No, oh, man, you're right. So leading arms then. They're all longitudinally mounted, long and short, plus one of them is lateral. Anyway, one of these axles is mounted like on a lotta, using links from a lotta. They're connected to the frame rails. We also have a panard rod over here, which stops the axle from moving left and right. That's how we set up the middle axle. As for the rear axle, we've decided to attach it to some diagonal links. It's so that it doesn't wobble side to side. And it also keeps it from moving back and forth. We've already pushed the car around the shed a bit to make sure everything works. We've got more than enough suspension travel, it doesn't look too tight. Before we get to installing the shock absorbers though, this car has to be driven around in order to figure out how tight the shocks have to be and how many will be needed. After that we decide what to do in terms of fine-tuning and finishing touches. And we still have to figure out what to do with torque transfer. Lada never made an axle which would kind of be able to transfer torque to the next one, like they do on Kama's trucks. Those usually have two axles right over here. Maybe we should use Kama's axles. They are a bit heavy. I'm just joking. That'll be too much for the motor. Anyway, the main issue here is torque transfer. But we'll figure something out. Actually, this really isn't that big of a problem. We knew beforehand that we'd have to find a prop shaft solution using some sort of transfer case. That's why one of the axle joints is pointing upwards, so that we can route a prop shaft using a system of mounting bearings, while the other one is pretty much level and pointing straight at the transfer case. We can already attach the front axle and get it to work without too much of a hassle. Okay, so it's time to do some testing. We need to head out and do a shakedown of our suspension setup without any additional load in the form of axles and transfer cases. We're going to be driving on the tarmac and off-road, looking for any weak spots. When we do tie everything together and put some load on the components, that's when the weak spots will give us a headache. Oh, absolutely, man. We should also double-check the suspension travel so that we can figure out how to route the prop shafts and connect them properly. In order to keep everything together, we tend to make a decision on such things right from the get-go. So the frame rails... You can even say that we have a frame here. Anyway, we welded it together using some box tubing. We bought some supplies, took some measurements, cut up the material. We're talking double-layered box tubing. Well, that goes without saying. Nobody's arguing with that, I mean... Good times, man. Remember we always used to look for shit when we were putting cars together? Now we've discovered this tubing and we use it literally for everything. I'm a fan. Anyway, fellas, we've finished the welding. We seem to have done a good job. This does actually look like a frame rather than a unibody with frame rails. You could probably call these frame rails, but they're quite stout. <laughs> we'll be adding some extra rigidity to the body, we still have to tie everything together. For the time being though, this is a frame, but we will end up with frame rails as soon as we apply some sheet metal. We'll definitely have to do that, since we will be experiencing some torsion. Yes, of course. And that won't do us any favors. And it's gonna get pretty dirty if we don't cover it. Can't argue with that. Anyway, as we like to say around here, time to take the car out, drive around and see what's up. All right, enough talk. Let's do this. Who's on battery duty? What's wrong? No? Oh, it's completely dead, man. Hang on. Go for it. It's alive. Awesome, let's get going.
All right, fellas, we are looking good. We just did some testing. We figured out the suspension travel. And we found only one weak spot. We didn't do the exhaust system yet, so the exhaust pipe kind of fell to the floor. We had to tie it to the body, but no biggie. You can't even call it a weak spot, but it was kind of funny. All right, so the car looks quite unusual. As you can see, a six-wheel Neva is quite trippy. Thanks for sending in those pegs. Anyway, we're looking good. All we have to do now is get some torque transfer happening and make this car all-wheel drive. As in six-wheel drive. And after that, we can go have some fun. So yeah, guys, watch our videos, subscribe, leave some comments and suggestions. Later, fellas!